from where you are, let's he head even further south for a journey to the bottom of the earth. NBC's Kerry Sanders is just back from Antarctica, where he got a remarkable look at the world's last wilderness. Kerry, good to see you. Good morning. Well, good morning, Matt. When most people think of Antarctica because it was just on the cover of Sports Illustrated, they may think of model Kate Upton. But if you look at those pictures there in the background, take a look. See that? Penguins and ice. And it's those penguins and ice that together, experts say, may be trying to tell us something. If there is a time of year for penguins to enjoy life, it's now. At the bottom of the world, it's summer. The eggs have hatched, chicks are molting, as waterproof feathers replace baby fuzz. Soon, the hungry will join their parents for their first polar plunge. They walk on, on their two feet, you know, they, they have this flipper, you look like arms, you know. Fabrice Genevois is the Jacques Cousteau of penguins. He says these flightless birds remind us of ourselves because they look and at times even act like humans. Both parents share duties. That means both male and female will go at sea to find food for the chicks. Uh, it's 50-50. Uh, I mean, both share the duty of the, of the breeding cycle. I know some people who think we could learn from that. Ah, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. Penguins are most certainly the ambassadors to the bottom of the world. They're all here as if they're coming to say, welcome, and you're, you know, welcome in my home, my world. But the ambassadors are also sounding an alarm. Scientists say not all is happy feet these days. Ten of the world's 18 penguin species are in trouble. In some areas, the penguins known as Adelis have seen their colonies drop by 90%. And in other areas, studies estimate the chinstrap penguins have seen their populations decline by 50%. And here's why. Look at that. The ice that dominates this landscape is melting faster than ever before. Oh, my goodness! The cause and effect, say scientists, is clear. Less ice means less shrimp-like krill, which grow in the water beneath the ice. Krill is the main food source for penguins, as well as for seals and whales. The Adelies and the Chinstrap are decreasing, so it might be related to the warming of the climate because there's no more sea ice as it used to be and then less krill to eat. Is that a canary in the coal mine for us as humans? Yeah, I mean, that's, that could be a canary in the coal mine. Exactly. Yeah. The ice matters not only to these guys, but also to us. The polar regions of the world are sort of the air conditioner. They regulate the temperature of the water, which impacts the weather where you live. Last year, 2012, was the hottest year ever on record. The Weather Channel documented more than 34,000 record daily high temperatures in the United States and less than 6,700 new record lows. This is very, a very concrete phenomenon, and we can measure it, and we have to consider what that's going to mean for the future. So if the ice is melting in some parts because of our use of fossil fuels, uh, because of cr uh, global warming, what are we supposed to do? And that's a question that I asked to the scientists down there. I said very simply, we can do something like just start carpooling. Of course, remember, this is not just a U.S. problem. Just this month, China became the world's largest importer of petroleum. Uh, Kerry Sanders, Kerry, fascinating. Thank you very much.